Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Well, today is a bonus episode. I don't have an episode number for you. Uh, during this coronavirus shutdown, everything that's going on with it, I've decided to do a couple bonus episodes to bring you information that just can't wait for my schedule, wait to get to an air date that I've got open. So today I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Ashley Marshall. She's coming to us from the State University of New York in Morrisville. She and some friends have started something called the Dairy drive Through. You are not going to believe the number of people that are coming out to receive donated dairy goods and the companies that are stepping up to make this happen. It is a great great story. It's incredible what's going on. And uh, we're going to bring that to you and hopefully to inspire more of these to pop up around the country. It's a great way to help the dairy industry and to help people in need or who are afraid to go to the grocery store during the coronavirus. Let's jump into that right now. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Well, I really do appreciate it. I know you're extremely busy, and uh, with this COVID, you know, coronavirus thing that's going on, I'm trying to highlight some of the the things people are doing for other people and get great ideas out there. So I appreciate you taking the time. I'm happy to. Okay. Happy to be a part of it. Well, let's do this. If we could, would you mind just giving us a brief introduction of you? What is you? What is your history? What's your background? Okay, sure. Um, so, <clears throat> I guess my background. Um, As far as agricultural goes, I grew up in a rural community. Um, We didn't necessarily have um, any animals on our farm that we owned, but we did actually house a local dairy farmer's dry cows. Um, Mm -hmm. And when I was little, that was essentially part of my uh, chores, if you would. In the winter, I had to go out and feed the dry cows and clean them and make sure they were bedded. Um, So I started that when I was little. Um, There wasn't a ton more that I did. Um, growing up through high school, but then once I uh, went to undergrad, I went to the University of Maine, and they have a small dairy herd there that I got a lot more experience uh, with dairy cows in, and that is actually where I kind of found my dairy bug, if you will, or the passion for the dairy industry. Okay. It was at that program, Um, and then following that, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian, as a lot of students do um, when they're coming through working with animals, Mm -hmm. Um, so I moved out to Colorado. Um, I was thinking I would get residency out there and then apply to CSU to become a large animal veterinarian. Okay. Um, and while I was there, I actually started working with uh, a dairy veterinarian whose focus was actually uh, dairy cattle reproduction. So um, while I was waiting to apply to CSU, I got a lot of experience uh, learning how to breed cows, learning how to actually ultrasound cows. Um, and actually from there, I ended up going into grad school rather than uh, vet school. Okay. So while I was in grad school, I actually got to teach a few classes and that's also where I kind of realized I had a passion for uh, teaching mm-hmm. um, that, I don't know, kind of seeing that aha moment or light bulb go off um, was really eye opening for me. And so that's where I decided my future probably did lie in uh, the dairy industry, but teaching dairy, pr- future dairy producers essentially um, and those interested in the dairy industry is what I was going to be doing. Okay. So that's how I ended up at SUNY Morrisville as an assistant dairy professor. Okay. So SUNY Morrisville, I actually just interviewed a student from SUNY Morrisville the other day and I'm going to be, really? yeah, I'm going to be playing that episode. She's a freshman there and I'll be playing that episode, I think in about two and a half weeks, I think is when it's coming out. So yeah, it was, it was neat yeah, to see great. your name pop up. Yeah. So now you did your undergraduate at the university of Maine. So did you grow up in Maine or did you grow up in New York state? Yes. Yeah, so I'm from Maine. Okay. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Grew up in Maine. So Maine to Colorado, that's a big jump. Correct. It was, yeah. But there's a lot of, um, at the time, I mean, that was my really my only option, especially since, again, at the time I was thinking vet school. So um, I decided, I looked where I would want to live for mm-hmm. a year prior to applying to vet school. Um, and there's a lot about Colorado that appealed to me. So I just kind of took the plunge, like you said, and sure. went out there. Sure. Yeah. I did the same thing. I grew up in California and went off to college in Montana and got my animal science degree. So uh, not as far as a move as you did, but uh, definitely a new world for me, which is really cool to, to do. Yeah, it was great. It was a definitely a different experience than anything <laughs> I could have um, had out in the Northeast. So it was great. All right. So you, you are now serving as an assistant professor in dairy science at uh, SUNY Morrisville, which is the State University of New York. 
And is, is uh, SUNY, is that the first university system that you taught for after you received your PhD? Yes. Yeah, I graduated in 2015, um, and I started out at SUNY Morrisville that fall. Okay. Well, based on what I know you're doing right now, they got to be looking at you going, well, five, you know, four years ago or five years ago, we hired you, and that is paying off because who would ever have seen this coronavirus thing coming? But look at what uh, look at what Dr. Marshall has been able to do. So uh, that that is great. What uh, tell us about Dairy Drive Through? What is that? If you could just explain it to everybody. Okay. So I'll kind of give you the background about how it was started first. <clears throat> um, so I know it is being held on the SUNY Morrisville campus, but there's actually um, a group of five uh, women, um, some of my close friends, and we kind of just came up with this idea together. Essentially, it came with two objectives. One was to help to serve those in our community who are in need, especially during this trying time with the coronavirus. Um, a lot of people have either been laid off or all of a sudden find themselves in financial distress and maybe they can't purchase uh, food items like they had been able to prior mm-hmm. to this coming about. Um, and then also, again, dairy industry is uh, near and dear to my heart. So we wanted to uh, figure out a way to help highlight what is going on um, in the dairy, dairy industry as well as other sectors of agriculture uh, due to this coronavirus uh, outbreak. Mm-hmm. So some of the friends that I talk about, um, they're all from the Morrisville area. Some work at SUNY Morrisville, some work with the Morrisville Auxiliary Corporation, but then some also work at our local Morrisville um, Eaton Central School District. Mm -hmm. And all of us are actually um, really involved with agriculture. Actually, four out of five of us are either involved in the dairy industry or um, are married to dairy farmers. So there's also that added. Um, passion there. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to try to marry those two things and see how we could get dairy products into the hands of those who needed it the most. Okay. Um, and then try to help with some of that supply issue that was going on or demand issue, if you will. Okay. So that's, I guess, how it all came to be. Um, we never expected it to be quite the uh, event that it has become. Mm-hmm. Um, but our plan was we just kind of seeked some financial donations. We had some come in that first week. So we purchased some dairy products um, and we were able to serve about 230 uh, families that drove through. They came up, we had our first drive up at the SUNY Morrisville Dairy Complex. They came through, they got their dairy package and then they went on their way. Very cool. Now that first week, when was that? (laughs) So that was, goodness gracious, Friday, April 3rd. Okay. So we're no, going, I'm sorry, April 10th. April, April 10th. 10th. So we're going on, well, yep. we're going on three weeks. Are you coming up on your third uh, dairy drive through event? Fourth. fourth, okay. We've, yeah, we've now completed four, uh, three, so our fourth one will be this Friday. Okay. So the fourth one is coming up. And so if I'm understanding correctly how this works, uh, you and, and your group of friends that put this together, you solicited financial donations from people in the community to support... Uh, those who are in need of food during this time, as well as people in the dairy industry and other aspects of agriculture, then you took that money, you went out, you purchased dairy products from dairy producers who otherwise would have to dump them or, or let them go to waste, and then donated them to people in need. Is that, am I understanding this right? Yes. So that was definitely our goal. I will say the very first week, Chobani showed up um, with full force and actually helped uh, produce, they uh supplied a lot of yogurt that we gave in addition to the purchased goods on, during our first drive. And they've actually been there every week since. Not sure if they can do it again this week, but they have been a huge supporter um, of this effort. Okay. Interesting. So, so Chobani came and they actually, instead of making you or having you purchase product, they just, they just gave it to you to pass out. Correct. And there's actually a lot of companies that have done that. So that's interesting um, because does so when it comes to so companies with good intentions like Chobani that want to give you product to to give to people who need it, does that stop you from purchasing yogurt, say from a smaller dairy producer who's really in need of of an outlet right now? Um, so to be honest, it almost at least from what I can tell, if anything, they're having a hard time keeping up with the demand. Those smaller dairy um, processors. There, it seems like there's a good amount of demand there, but you see it. Um, we're having to dump milk in the dairy industry. Unfortunately, you know, mm-hmm. laying uh, well, meat birds are actually ha- having to probably be 
um, yeah, put euthanized. down yeah. because there's no, yeah, there's no place to actually process them. Mm -hmm. um, and then same with the swine industry. So we're seeing that in all sectors of agriculture. Um, those bigger processors are sometimes having a little bit of trouble um, moving their product, whereas okay. those smaller ones, some people it seems like are getting more comfortable or going to seek out those products from those smaller processors. Okay. Um, so we have been purchasing yogurt from smaller processors, but we've actually had some say they have a hard time keeping up with us. So mm -hmm. it's actually been a save and grace that um, <laughs> okay. Tobani came in uh, to help out. And so they are still, they're actually now kind of, running out of product like so we're seeing a good thing come of this mm -hmm. dfa has been actually the last two weeks they have been supplying us with milk and it's getting harder for them to do that because there are other drive throughs such as ours that are cropping up uh -huh. um, and so their demand on that fluid milk is actually been increased as well okay so that's a good thing okay so i'm always interested in a win-win situation so what i'm hearing from you then is that the the smaller producers that kind of have the niche markets in your area, they have actually maybe seen an increase in their demand throughout this coronavirus issue. They're doing well. And so by by being able to donate, say, the Chobani yogurt, you're supporting the folks in the dairy industry who their outlet for their milk and their yogurt is straight to a company like Chobani. Correct. I mean, and then there's also some of these larger corporations like so Chobani or Agorelic is actually one of the ones that DFA is, um, we're getting our milk through. So if anything, I know that we are getting it free, but that helps to reduce any sort of chance or at least reduce the chances of them having to dump milk as a result mm -hmm. of this, because mm -hmm. we're helping move that product. Even though I know we're getting it for free and we're giving it out for free, it allows them to process more. Okay. Um, very cool. It's it's interesting that Chobani's part of this. They're actually a huge uh, company not too far from me in southern Idaho down in Twin Falls. They really do a lot for the community down there. So uh, interesting. Yeah, they're from, very generous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very cool that uh, that they're involved. Glad to hear that. So now uh, on the other term, on, on the other side of this, where you've got people who are coming and they're they're accepting the products from you, are you finding yourself uh, having enough to meet the demand, or do you get to people and go, "I'm sorry, that's all we have for today." So it's actually changed dramatically in the past three weeks. So the very first week, uh, we were underprepared. We, uh, the group of five of us, thought we'd maybe be serving 30 to 50 people just in our immediate community, um, mm -hmm. whereas we actually had people coming um, from over an hour away that we did not expect. Wow. So we did have, I think we served, we estimate about 230 people that day, and we had to turn away about the same amount um, as we ran out of product. Mm-hmm. Second week, we were a lot more prepared. Um, we had, I think we gave out roughly two, I'm sorry, 550 bags. Um, and the very last handful that came through got at least gallons of milk, but nobody left empty handed. So mm -hmm. we felt like we were prepared there. <clears throat> we amped it up a little bit for last week. I um, mean, we're essentially prepared to serve about 700 to 750 people that came through. Um, and we, ran out we ended up having to split some of our bags to serve more people we probably served over a thousand um, and we estimate that we actually ended up turning away probably two thousand wow yeah it was it was insane that is insane so, so you served a thousand vehicles i guess because we'll talk about how the logistics of this works in a minute and turned away two thousand am i understanding that right that's what, yes i mean and that is 100 percent a huge estimate. Sorry, my dog's <laughs> That's okay. um, That is a huge estimate because um, really the only way we're coming up with that is because um, essentially they blocked both. They went from where we entered the small town of Morrisville um, and were lined up on a route here, Route 20, for probably eight miles in either direction. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So we don't really know exactly how many. I just know they started getting turned away really, really early. Eight miles of cars both north and south or east and west lined up waiting to get through your drive through correct oh okay, my goodness so yeah i mean again that's a rough estimate but i know there were some disappointed people unfortunately but that was a huge increase and i know we will not be equipped to serve even close to that many people this week either my goodness so that is amazing to me uh, you know i i'm watching the news like everybody else but to have that many people, thousands of people that are coming to this 
from all over are I am not seeing reports on the news indicating that people are in these types of dire straits right now where they need food this bad but you must be seeing something differently in your your local geographic area well to be honest one thing we've actually found throughout this whole um process is that again when we thought we did it we were going to be helping people just like you kind of explained who really were in just kind of desperate need for food Mm -hmm. um but at the same time we have seen that the definition of in need has changed okay um so it's not just somebody that can't afford necessarily to come and get the dairy product it might be somebody maybe it's an older uh, family uh, or a couple, they are immunocompromised and they are terrified of going to the grocery store to get okay. the products themselves. So okay. we have seen some of those people come through. And right. we don't ask questions. I mean, we don't vet anybody before they come. If they come, um, we are going to give them the dairy products. So there, of course, is a chance that there are some people that are coming through yeah. um, that maybe don't need it as much. But again, we don't ask questions. Sure. I mean, you just got to take the, take the good with the bad on something like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's interesting. So this is a whole new dynamic that we've never really experienced, which is people aren't coming because they can't afford to go buy food. They're coming because they're afraid to go buy food. Yes. And that, I think, is, yeah, you couldn't have said it better. I mean, there's plenty of people that will come through and will do a very generous donation Mm -hmm. um, to help us continue purchasing dairy products for the next drive. Um, Not everybody, I mean, a donation is by no means expected. Mm-hmm. Um, so those who can't afford a donation will just come get the dairy and go on their mm-hmm. way, and that's totally fine. Okay. Now, okay, so let's talk logistics really quick, and let's just start with, with the biosecurity. So you've got people coming to you because they feel it's this is a safer way to get food. So how does that biosecurity work for this? So we try to practice social distancing as much as we can. That said, usually we have a team of two people on a table that are giving out goods mm-hmm. to a car that comes through, but everybody has masks on and gloves and then prior to them coming to wherever the station is that they're going to get their goods we do have a request that they either have their passenger side rear window down or essentially whichever um, seat is open in the rear or Mm -hmm. pop their trunk Mm -hmm. so that we're not giving it directly to people every once in a great while um, somebody maybe the window is broken or their trunk's broken Mm -hmm. we do have to hand it to them but we try to avoid that uh, wherever possible and then if they want to hand you a donation or give you a donation how do they do that so that is given just directly to the person, okay. um, essentially from their front window. And so okay. then we stick it in a bag um, and we essentially let it sit there for a couple of days before we count it. <laughs> okay. Now, in terms of what you're giving away, what, what does a standard bag contain? So there's not necessarily a standard bag. We try our best to get like four different dairy products, at least in the bag, and then a gallon or two of milk. Um, we'll only be able to give out a gallon this week just because of the demand we had mm-hmm. um so usually um i'll give you a last week's bag example we had sour cream in there uh, we had yogurt in there we had a block of cheese in there uh, and then we had what was the other thing we had in there we did have eggs butter and then we put butter in there as well mm-hmm. very interesting so, so in in outside of companies like chobani that are donating where are you seeing or where are you sourcing, you know, the milk and the cheese and, and the sour cream, things like that from? So we are trying to mix it up and kind of keep some of our local producers, um, keep them in the mix. So um, Stolfos Family Dairy is a uh, dairy farm and processor here locally in central New York. So we purchased blocks of cheese from them. We've actually essentially kept or drained them of their cheese. Um, and, ha- and we're going to actually use their cheese curd for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are definitely keeping them going, okay. or at least putting them to their max, if you will. Uh-huh. Um, so we try to purchase from some of our more local, smaller producers. Um, but that said, I think the butter, that's something we've gotten through on the local distributor. Um, I don't, I'm not even quite sure where, because there's somebody out, one of the other women is actually in charge of getting the butter order in. But we're just... Trying to purchase this where we can. Mm -hmm. The issue there is that we are buying it in bulk, so we just definitely have to kind of like feel it out and see where we can get that because luckily it's not as bad now, but when we first started this, there were still grocery stores that were limiting um, your purchasing 
from of dairy products. Oh, right, so that right. was even making the uh, problem even worse. Right. So. They're trying to limit people from hoarding and taking everything on the shelf, but yes. you need mass quantities to be able to give it away to folks. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So. Interesting catch twenty two. Yep. Okay, so uh, in terms of obviously this started out as a as a way of all of you who love the dairy industry supporting the dairy industry, but I heard you speaking with your husband off mic there a minute ago about potatoes. So <laughs> uh, more items getting added to the donation list? Yeah, so it was kind of unexpected, but so last week um, there was a local church uh, probably about an hour away. They reached out to us because they knew that we w- did get a big shipment of milk in and they were going to do a dairy giveaway from their church. And so they were looking for 250 gallons. So we were able to help them out um, and get the milk into their community. Um, and in return, he actually, uh, somebody reached out and asked if we were interested in eggs because there was a like, local egg producer who, again, had an oversupply of eggs and he was at risk of having to essentially dispose of them. Right. So what we did, um, we decided to help him out and we purchased those eggs uh, from him to kind of help him out. So we did add eggs to the mix last week, and we're going to do the same. And we're going to work with that same producer to provide eggs this week. Okay. And then one of the people that is involved also um, knows of somebody that uh, produces potatoes, and they're in the exact same boat. So they mm-hmm. have about 500 bags, 510-pound bags, that we are going to be giving out to the first 500 cars that come through this week. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, it's just to prevent that producer from having to destroy those potatoes. Mm -hmm. What an incredible idea you all came up with. Uh, This is fantastic. And obviously you said there's, there's other dairy drive throughs popping up as, is that all localized to you or is it elsewhere around the United States that you're seeing people replicate what you're doing? So we do know there's at least, I would say half a dozen and that's light, but probably 10 or more within New York that are um, popping up. We've Mm -hmm. had a lot of people reach out to us to kind of see um, how we can help them. And I know I have outstanding like requests to call and answer some questions um, to help get them started. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've had a bunch um, within central New York that are popping up. I did get an email from somebody. I'm not sure exactly where she was located, but it was along the Appalachian trail. Okay. Kind of just trying to pick our brain and see, um, if we had any pointers. So I hope it is becoming more of a national um, effort. We actually are only have plans to do one more here. Um, mm-hmm. So we're hoping that others are, will be able to continue on this effort um, throughout New York. And then even, like you said, the nation, that would be awesome. That's interesting. So you're going into your fourth one and you've seen increases in numbers of people coming in each one. Is that right? In each subsequent? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so we'll see what Correct. you get in, in the fourth one. Um, so you said you're hoping that this the fourth one will be your final one. Is that correct? No, we have one more. So May 8th will be our final one. Okay. Actually, two of the myself and another of the women who is involved is actually eight plus months along pregnant. So we can't continue <laughs> doing it forever. Well, so, I was... Ho- <laughs> I was going to ask you that, you know, I mean, other than the fact that uh, you're doing this for free, it's consuming every spare moment of your life and Mm -hmm. all these people's time and attention, you know, what other reason would you bring it to an end? But I, is that have anything to do with a leveling off of what you're seeing in the community or anything like that, or just the fact that you guys are tapped out? It really does have to do with the fact that we are kind of tapped out and we are seeing again, as more of these crop up, it is getting harder for other um, companies who have donated for us, so for example, Kraft Heinz has been incredibly generous as well. So Chabani DFA, Kraft Heinz, um, they actually are having a lot more people reach out to them. So okay. um, it's harder for them to donate. Um, and we do try to uh, pay it back whenever we can. Um, but so I think with the amount that are cropping up throughout mm-hmm. uh, New York, hopefully whoever is really truly in need will still be able to find this product at one of these other uh, dairy drives that are starting up so what you're saying is uh companies are the excess they have the excess inventory is pretty much being in your area has been taken and been given out and so there's there's not a whole lot of excess left that's what it's sounding like from that's what we are seeing okay. it's getting yeah harder to get your hands on it gotcha Interesting. Now, does that leave the door open, though, for somebody in the same area to go back to that original model, which is to collect donations from the community, then go out and purchase to donate, to give away? 
Yes, I mean, I think that model, and I assume all of these other dairy drives are doing that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing, I guess I could have mentioned this, the milk, most of the milk that is being donated is something that probably would have been um, already earmarked for like a school mil- uh, lunch program or something like that. Sure, sure. Um, so and since the schools are no longer open um, and they have fewer students that are using that, uh, mm-hmm. that is where that availability kind of came from. Okay. Um Okay. But yeah, I think purchasing would be very beneficial. And again, that was kind of our goal as well to help stimulate um, that in purchasing actual dairy products as well. All right. Well, I've got I've I've got my next question ready for you, but I've got a little twinge of guilt asking it to you because uh, this is <laughs> because I'm putting this out tomorrow as we record this. This will be coming out on the 30th of April, and it'll be going out to. Thousands of people all around the United States and in Canada, in Australia, England, we get downloaded a lot. So here's my question that I, I feel bad about asking you, but if, if people want to know more information, how would they go about contacting you and getting your tips and strategies or mistakes you've made that they shouldn't make or whatever it may be if they want to do this in their community? Um, so they are welcome to reach out to me. Um, you have my email. I'm welcome to say it here in a little bit. But they just have to realize, especially I am a full-time professor at SUNY Morrisville and finals weeks is is approaching. So <laughs> right. they just need to realize that they have to be patient with uh, any sort of response. Mm-hmm. Um, I will get and help however many people I can um, with an effort such as this. Sure. And that said, there's also um, plenty of the women who are involved have stepped up because it is my name that is the contact. Um, and I've been known to forward some emails onto them as well. So Okay. They're welcome to reach out to us, and we will get back to them uh, when we can. Okay. And do you got, are you operating any sort of social media page where people could direct a message in, and then any one of the five or six of you could answer it, so it's not all on you, not all coming to your inbox? Um, so it has been the SUNY Morrisville Facebook page has been where a lot of the community has been reaching out, and they have been forwarding it as well. Okay. Um, but they're probably going to get flooded. So unfortunately, no, we didn't make a Facebook or social media page because we didn't expect a this effort to get as huge as it was or b to last as long as it did so we didn't prepare for that (laughs) okay (laughs) well thank you so much for uh for what you're doing i think uh, you know obviously what you're doing right there in your area is very very valuable but i think the example you're setting for so many different reasons for other people to replicate what you're doing or other people to get into the spirit of this and say, let's all pull together and, and be creative and, and ways to help each other out is also really great what you've done. Thank you very much for that. No, thank you. You bet. And thank you for coming on and sharing this. I will share your contact information, but everybody, figure stuff out okay. for yourself as much as you can because <laughs> Dr. Marshall and her colleagues in the dairy drive through are swamped. So be very sparing in those emails you send her. But thank you so much for coming on today, Dr. Marshall. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you to Dr. Marshall and all of our colleagues for doing this, all of our friends. And as always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.